I think this might be the first time this guy's ever seen a camera. I was interested in her because I'd seen her speech on UN Women, and I thought she was a, a famous face that would be interesting for our young leaders. Um, not, not knowing or not being certain of um, how, how good she would be um, on a panel. It's ridiculous! <laughs> Who gets transfixed by a camera? One thing you can guarantee whenever there's snow, you know some genius will do this. No, but look, look, come and look at it at the front. Come and look at it at the front, but. Is it not really good? Now, the only bright spark in a dismal week came from us, the people. Look at the magnificent way this Irish lady is dealing with Brexit. We are hoping that there's no hard border, but if there is, if they put bricks and steel up, I'd creep through a hedge. <laughs> <laughs> but my hero of the week was this guy. He wins my award for most persistent protest ever. Uh, and I know that you've said if you think negotiating the withdrawal agreement was difficult, then what's to come could be even more tricky. I mean, absolutely. I think we, we need to remember where we are at this stage. So, regardless of what happens um, to the withdrawal agreement, whether the UK Parliament rejects it or accepts it, at some point the UK and the EU are going to have to continue negotiating. So, you know, we've got three options essentially. The UK Parliament rejects the deal um, and uh, the government decides to go back to Brussels and negotiate, but we don't know if that will be enough time. Option two, the UK Parliament accepts the deal and then we enter into future discussions so about trade, about security, about foreign policy. And the third option, of course, is the UK Parliament rejects it and we enter no deal. But even then, we're going to have to go back to Brussels at some point. And, you know, this is a complex negotiation. To think that, the, you know, the most difficult part has been Brussels is, is wrong. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Remember our old friend from Westminster? And lots of Brexit, so analysts that look at Brexit very closely think that that's not going to be long enough to yeah, really so no guarantee to make that the job can be done in that time. Exactly. No, 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 no guarantee at all. The media were so frustrated with him ruining their shots, they built a 20-foot tower. Did that stop him? What do you think? Legal advice, and then say, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I think that that's kind of moving. So I, I think the prime minister is very used to speak, but uh, but in view pretty comfortably. He's like a heroic Mr. Tickle. Some people were saying it was the greatest moment of Farage's radio career. Nah. I prefer this. I, I, I'm uh, immensely um, grateful to you for everything you've done in British politics over the last few years. Uh, I used to be a, an ardent Remain. I voted Remain. I believed in the European project. Mm -hmm. uh, I believed that staying in the European Union was the best thing for us. And then something happened and... Something monumental happened. I, it completely changed my, my opinion on, on the, the whole situation. What, uh, what was that monumental thing, Mark? I, I was kicked in the head by a horse. <laughs> right, very good. OK, fine. <laughs> now, elsewhere in the news, the weather has been horrific. 700 people told to leave their homes as flooding cuts off parts of the north of England. My heart goes out to everyone affected, but what amazed me, even though some people's houses were destroyed, they're still able to see the funny side. It's such a British reaction. Everything's gone to shit, might as well have a laugh. I mean, look at this guy. This country. I'm not sure it's working, Jeff. <laughs> a lot of people were stranded, but one hero didn't give a shit. <laughs> no! <laughs> I love her. She's like a cross between the Stig and Noah. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this guy. His street's flooded and he's still funny as fuck. What's the situation at your place? Uh, it's awful. Like I say, I've, I just came back from Iceland and... Uh... Got some bits like jammy dodgers and all that. And I'm walking through, but flying everywhere, so obviously I'm not going to have biscuits now. My biscuits are gone. <laughs> Hang on, all bloody bit. Three packets, dodgers, gone. <laughs> all of that, they've just gone down the river. They were an old lady in a scooter. She flew by, picked them up. <laughs> they gone, my dodgers are gone. No one applaud, mate. <laughs> How 
can you be that funny, man? Talking of which, this reporter wins my award for innuendo of the week. Tom, what I thought was a river behind you is in fact a road. It's not looking good there tonight. No, it's a bit wet out here, Amy. I don't know if you've had anything to do with that. <laughs> I, uh, don't know that was you, Amy. Remainers offered to sell the BrexitParty.com to Nigel Farage for a million pounds. Basically, a load of Remainers bought the website, the BrexitParty.com, and they'll only give it to Farage if he pays a million quid. And if he does pay that, that money would be donated to the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants. <laughs> it's hilarious, right? But it gets even better. Farage is threatening to sue to get control of the website using laws from the European Union. <laughs> May I be the first to say, ah! <laughs> now, away from politics, God, I love this story. Now, an 82-year-old woman has described the moment she made a man regret breaking into her home in New York after she fought back. The intruder was unaware that despite Willie Murphy's age, she is still in very good shape and is not your average 82-year-old. You can say that again. <laughs> Listen to what she did to the intruder. I took that table and I went to working on him, and guess what? The table broke, and it had metal legs, and I'm jugging him, jugging him, jugging him. And when he's down, I'm jumping on him. Uh, 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 uh. I use that bastard like a goddamn trampoline. There's more. There's a bottle of baby shampoo on the table. I grabbed the shampoo, and guess what? He's still on the ground in his face. <laughs> Eat head and shoulders, motherfucker! <laughs> the ending was glorious. The police arrive on the porch, and the house is already open, so they come in. He's laying down already. Cause I had really did a number on that man. <laughs> I'm serious. Dread, she's got a sign outside her house that just says, beware of me. <laughs> Such a baffling few months in politics. So many things made no sense. Why did the Tories go door to door on an icy day? They'll hope this is not a metaphor for their campaign. <laughs> Why? Did the Lib Dems do this? <laughs> and what did Boris Johnson do to this lady? We're just here in Uxbridge today, um, Boris Johnson's constituency. Don't you ever mention that name in front of me, that filthy piece of terror. <laughs> did you see this? ITV reporter Debbie Edward tripped into wearing body armour to hold koala. <laughs> she was told that koala bears are deadly. Watch this, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, we keep on calm. Yeah. Everybody looks Same. very, You're very worried little... about this. I'm trying not to be worried because I'm being told that he can sense if I'm worried. I'm not quite sure what it's doing right now. Oh, it's looking at the... what? Okay. No, right. I thought he was going to get you. Take it off, take it off, take it off. Please take it off me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's all right, it's all right. Okay. Good boy. All right. Good work, Sam. Thanks, yeah. mate. Let's go. Here we go. You're <laughs> You're kidding me! <laughs> <It's> fucking obvious. <laughs>